of soul givers now this is a abstract game uh, where you absorb the souls of the fallen heroes and capture the fragment to survive the decay it's a competitive strategy game for two to four players and i'm joined by julia who's from gravity games julia thank you for joining me today thank you for having me it's been an, it's, how are you today i'm good i'm good i'm just you know it's the final day of spiel and so i made myself a lemon honey just because my throat's getting a bit bit tired but um we're going through and we're going to play some fun games and I'm really excited to check out Soul Givers because this is actually a game I backed myself. So um, now I get the chance to play it before my pledge even arrives and um, I'm really excited. Uh, well, I can, thank you for backing. Of course, yeah. I can imagine this is, um, you know, you're, you've, the campaign's already finished, So, but you are now taking late pledges. And by the way, people should late pledge. I will be posting the link in the Twitch. But um, I imagine you're tired because this just finished like two weeks ago or something, right? Oh, yeah. We, it was a very intense campaign. We, we were all in. Uh, yeah. we, we did take a nap as we, we did to take like a week, 10 a days week off. A week-long nap, yep. <laughs> yeah, a week-long nap. We really needed it, trust me. I <laughs> but, can imagine. Uh, we're back. Yeah, we're back in the game now. We are already uh, preparing everything for production. You know, yeah. we, the late pledge is up, so we we really want to get the get the game to you. As long, you know, until we have you have the game, since you yep. you backed until you have the game, we're not gonna be happy. So we're gonna really work hard on it. Oh, that that's that's really awesome to hear, and it's really good to hear when the creators are working for the backers. And I mean, you you raised eighty eight point six k for this game so there's obviously a lot of people excited for it and that that's that must be really that must be a really cool feeling oh it's it's amazing and we did not expect to raise that much money so we're so happy but it was yeah. really thanks to the backers like we really worked uh hard with them during the campaign took all their suggestions their comments to make the campaign better so mm. it, it, we are really working with the backers because they were a super important part of our campaign so Absolutely. without them we wouldn't have raised 88.6k yeah. <laughs> probably so thank you oh that's really good to hear and and so is this gravity games uh first game oh it is actually uh gravity games was opened for the game wow, so cool. uh, luca had the idea and everything started from there so it's the first game uh hopefully not the last one because we have tons of ideas but awesome. uh, it was our first game our first kickstarter campaign ever uh so we really like jumped into it and it was like oh my god what is this we, yeah we thought we were prepared <laughs> but you're never prepared for a Kickstarter campaign, I guess. No, no. I've run a Kickstarter <laughs> myself, and I know I know the absolute hell that it can be, but also the rewarding yeah. feeling that comes from oh, actually yeah. doing it. It's so good. I um, I I mean, I can see why people wanted to back this. The art, the we have the we have the Kickstarter video up on the background right now, and the art is gorgeous. Who who did the art for this? Look is the mastermind of behind everything wow. he created the game he thought of the game he is the artist uh he basically is the man uh yeah the, the art is incredible he he's really talented mm. and he uses mixed techniques is he's all in his head i don't know <laughs> how much space he has left because this is awesome but he, but apparently you've got more his... games that you want to do so yeah right <laughs> what <laughs> oh my god yeah Every every day I talk to him, he's like, "Oh, I have this other idea," and I'm oh like, god. "Oh my god, oh, how <laughs> it's awesome!" But like, how do you produce yeah. so much stuff? Yeah, absolutely. And and so uh, Luca's the d designer. For people who don't know, um, the, the designer and um, also the artist. And and what was what was your role with the game? So I came in uh, a little later. Uh, I um, I am the translator of the game, but mm -hmm. also uh, throughout these months, you know, we were supposed to launch much earlier, but then a global pandemic kind of happened yeah. and we had to delay. Uh, so we took these months off to balance the game. So I worked with Luca to uh, balance the game, to uh, tweak the rules a little bit so that you have the game that you have today. Yeah. And it's really fun when you have to especially like create rules for a game it can mm -hmm. get very insane like oh what if we do that oh yeah. that would be mean i like it <laughs> yeah cool cool 
I mean, every every part of this game is is gorgeous. Even the pieces look so good. I mean, we've got the um, we've got the tokens up right now with the mag magnetic fragments and the and the semi translucent souls that it, like they light up when you shine a light through them. They, it just has such a cool table presence. Yeah, that was kind of our objective too. We wanted a game. You know, most board games are cool, but yep. they're not cool looking. So we yep. really wanted to bring a piece of like really good design so that when you play the game is also nice to look at so everything mm -hmm. every single detail is really um we really thought about it and how we want it so yeah the different materials the the pieces the tokens are stacked on top of each other the clips so you can easily move them you yeah. have the magnetic fragment the different colors the accents uh everything was really to make also a very nice looking game because yeah. It's nice to play something that looks nice. Of course. Oh my gosh, this is your first game. This is so good. Um, I'm very excited for this. Could um, could you tell us a bit more about what we do in the game? So oh, yeah, the, the the objective of the game is really simple: is to capture the flag. Yep. Uh, with that said, it's not that simple to to win, not sure. play. It's pretty yeah. easy to play. So basically, you come in from two portals, and uh, there are the two. Uh, rectangular colored uh, pieces that you have on your side. Mm. Uh, there are two populations that are basically fi fighting for the fragment, which is the little piece at the center, uh, because they are dying of a uh, cosmic disease called decay. Mm. Uh, this cosmic disease uh, was created uh, from, it started from the destruction of this planet that kept everybody alive, and they started to die, and they figure out that this was their only cure. So they're rushing in to try to collect it first. And then when they re when they get to uh, what is left of first ring, they realize they're not alone on this multiverse right. they, because they didn't know the existence of the others. So basically they get in, they get into uh, the board through the portals yep. and their goal is to reach the fragment, get it and bring it back to their uh, portal so that it can bring it back to their planet. Awesome. Uh, Yep, that's the main goal. But then you have a lot of cool stuff on the boards because you see like there are uh, walls that interrupt your movements or black holes because we are in outer space. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. And yeah, it's modular. Everything is changing. Uh, that, yep. that, that sounds... So the, the whole game... Yeah. The whole game is based on a lore because we also have short stories that yep. go with the, with the game and explain why certain characters have certain abilities, yep. why the world is the way, why that's your objective. So it's a full, like, rounded world. Oh, that's really awesome. And I, I know that um, one of the things you've said on the campaign is there's no randomness in this game. So it's a very tactical, abstract game, right? Yes, it is. Uh, everything is basically in your hands. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that could be considered kind of randomly are the anomalies that are instant cards, but mm. you can block them. Uh, you can have to pay for them, so they have to be part of your strategy. It's not something that you can just throw into the game. Sure. And you can only play them before you know what your opponent is doing. So cool. it's not something like, oh, I'm doing this. Like, no, you're not. No, <laughs> you have to do it earlier. So yeah. it's really... And the replayability is really high because um, the, the field, for example, the board mm. is different every time. Um, and uh, even like... The way you play the characters is not the same. The the the, strat the amount of like different strategies you have is so insanely big. Yeah. Uh, also due to, to the different combinations that it, it's impossible to have twice the same game. Oh, that's And awesome. that's what's so cool about it. two versus two or like one to one player that you never have the same exact game. That's really cool. Well, I'm excited to learn more about the game and I'd love to learn how it plays. So um, we've got the Tabletopia version up here. Uh, Julia, I'd, I'd love for you to teach me the game. Right, so let me, I usually help myself with a little recap card that oh, cool. is here on the side. Yep. So again, we said that uh, you have your portal. So in this case, it's the orange and aqua. I'll mm. be the orange even I usually am the aqua. Oh yeah. Oh, do you want? <laughs> do you want to swap? <laughs> no, it's fine. It's okay. fine. Okay. I'll let you play my people. Um, <laughs> but uh, so the orange is the shells, and the aqua are the specters. Those are the two populations fighting for the fragment. Okay. Uh, the white lines you see on the board are the um, walls 
you mm. have to imagine the walls as something like super high that you cannot jump over, uh, you cannot go through. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a real obstacle on the board. And the black holes are the uh, black ones yep. that you see on the board. So uh, just to let you know, unless there is a special character that doesn't, any character that goes on the black hole dies. Okay. So if you Sounds walk bad. on it, goodbye. Exactly. Okay. Uh, in the middle of the board, we have the fragment, which yeah. is this little white guy, and uh, the barrier who, with that protect, which protects the fragment. Mm. You need to destroy in order to access it, and I explain in a second how okay. to do it. So you basically play with three characters at a time. Uh, the characters are here on the side. Uh, you choose your first three characters. Oh, okay. Uh, so you have a deck of 10. Yep. We have expansions out that you can also purchase right now. Yep. Uh, some of them were already in uh, the, uh, within the pledge, there were stretch goals that we unlocked. So we yep. were super happy about that. Awesome. But you will always play with 10 characters. So okay. even if you have 14, you have to choose your 10 to okay. put in the deck. Interesting. Um, so you choose your first three. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's your strategy. Your like starting team yep. and you will take you will play all three characters in your turn so you don't have to play one wait for the opponent and then play your sure, the other sure. you play all three in your turns yes and you play them in order the okay. order can change but you have to activate a character then you deactivate move on to the next one deactivate move on to the next one without having the chance to go back to or the like character interrupt that you already or... deactivated. yeah yeah Cool. You have to go, you decide the order, can change from turn to turn, but you cannot go back to something that you already used. Sure. Okay, so you have different type of actions that you can take with your character. You have free actions and tribute actions. The free actions are the movement. Uh, you can see the movement. I don't know if you can uh, open any card. You see the movement uh, is the first round icon. You have a little number, yep. and usually it's a straight line or a... Uh, 90 degree angle that indicates the maximum movement you have and uh so you don't have to take if it says three you don't have to move of three you can move up one or two oh, sure, whatever sure. but your maximum movement is uh up to three the little right and angle it, symbol in the left top left of each um yeah yep cool. so that will indicate if you can take turns yep or uh, like if you can make actually like turns with your character, or if oh, you have sure. to go to uh, on a straight line, follow a straight line. Got it. Got uh, it. The runner is a character in this deck, for example, must go just straight lines. But he has six. Uh, exactly. Yes. Okay. <laughs> cool. Um, then you can rotate your shields. So if you look at just any token, really, uh, you see that they have shields. Yep. Those are the little lines on top. This is. These shields are the only protections you have from being destroyed when attacked. Okay. Uh, they never wear out. They are always there. It's not that you have hit the shield once, they go away, and then... Yeah. No, they're always there. So it's really important that you uh, rotate them in the right way to sure. protect yourself. Um, you can rotate them of however you want. It yep. doesn't have to be 90 degree. No, you just fix them how you want. Uh, I suggest at the end of your movement because it makes more sense. Because you know what you need to protect yourself from. Exactly. Cool. Um, and then you can absorb a soul as a free action. So okay. when a soul giver is destroyed, they leave their soul mm -hmm. on the the board. And this is the translucent piece you were talking be about yeah, before. Yeah. Um, so allies can absorb the souls of a soul giver. And for example, they, like this one, mm. you just need to be in the same tile, oh, on the yep. same tile as the soul. So you just declare the that you want to absorb it and it becomes yours and they stuck on top of each other. Sure. So what this entails is that uh, you usually have just one life point. Yep. So if you're attacked, you're destroyed. But when you have a double soul, you it's like you have two life points okay. because you first lose the soul. Yeah. So you're attacked once, you lose the soul, and then you will have to be attacked again in order you know, to, be, to destroyed. be destroyed. Cool. And the cooler part is that you also absorb all the abilities that that soul giver has. Oh, okay. So abilities and auras, 
uh, you absorb all of them and you're able to use them as well. So cool. the combination between Soul Giver and Soul is really important in this game and yeah. a really important part of the strategy. Interesting. So uh, I was talking about abilities that yeah. uh, our first uh, tribute action. So it's called tribute action because you have to pay a tribute in order to use it. Sure. Uh, you can be paid in uh, tribute essences that are these little pieces here. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, or in uh, decay. So you will pay with your own disease and life essence. Okay. But most actions are paid with tribute essences. So this little ones. Cool. Uh, you have three per turn, not per character. So you have to choose the how to use them wisely because three is a very limited number Got if it. you have three characters. Yeah. Uh, the ability is indicated on the card. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the one written in white. So oh, you yeah. have the name and the range of the ability and underneath it, the description. The range can be of cells. So with cells, we say it's like the little square yep. or tiles. So a tile is made up of four cells. So on the Volomancer, for example, mind control yeah. is uh, one square, but acquiescence is three uh, cells. Oh no, so other, other way around. Uh, three Let squares me... and one uh, cell for mind control. Let me open them up. I didn't have them open. Uh, the okay. Volomancer is... So mind control is one tile because yep. you have the four squares. Uh, while acquiescence is three cells. Yes. Cool. Okay. Yep. Got it. Okay. And they don't have to be in a straight line because yep. you have the little 90 degree 90 angle degree. sign. Cool. Hyphen. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay. So, and then you see that certain characters like the Volomancer have two abilities. Uh, the important thing in this game is that you can only play uh, the type of action once. So you cannot use two abilities in your same turn. You will okay. have to choose one. Okay. Okay. So even with the attack, you can only do one attack, not two. Movement, just one movement, not two, of course. Sure, But sure. Um, the main um, c categories, I guess, of actions can only be repeated once. Yeah. Um, Okay, and also you have the aura. For example, uh, a character that has an aura is the space walker. You yep. can see that it's an aura and not an ability because it's usually written in the color of the population. So yours should be sure. an aqua. Yep. And you have a little A next to it. So these are passive abilities that are always active. You don't have to pay, you yep. don't have to declare it. They always have it, they're passive ability. Cool. Uh, the cool thing is that when you have a double soul, like in the example before, with just one tribute essence, you can activate one soul giver ability and one soul ability. Okay, so in soul abilities are the abilities of souls you picked up? Yep. Cool. And also you acquire as well the aura of the soul. So right, cool. if you're lucky and you have the aura of the soul giver, you can also use the aura Got it. of the soul. So yeah. it makes the soul giver really powerful. Awesome. Cool. Um, then another action that you can take uh, that is a tribute action, so like a paid action, is mm -hmm. the attack. Yep. Not all soul givers have the ability to attack. They need to have the little dagger icon uh, on the card. Is the last one to the right. Oh, yeah. Uh, so like the example, space walker has? Yep, cool. exactly. So the Spacewalker has, the Volomancer doesn't, the Runner doesn't. Uh, you really have to check your card. Cool. So what that, how that works is that you just pay a Tribute Essence and it activates. But in order to attack, I'm going to steal Do it. your... <laughs> okay. Yep. So in order to attack, for example, if my Confuser wants to attack your Architect, uh, you have to be adjacent, so right next to it. This mm -hmm. game never plays in diagonal lines. Yeah. Uh, only orthogonal. Okay. Uh, you have to be right next to uh, an opposing soul giver. And for example, in this case, uh, you cannot use your attack action because the architect is protected the by the shield. Yep. So you will have to be in. Nope. Yes, in this position in yeah. order to attack, be able to attack. And in that case, your architect will be dead because I just attack yeah. one life point yeah. and just leaves the soul. The sure. other uh, very important thing that you need attack for is to destroy the barrier. You have yeah. to be right next to the barrier. You use your attack and the barrier goes away for everyone. Mm -hmm. So now the fragment is available to be picked up and that and the the central barrier is the only barrier that can be destroyed 
Yes. Okay. So, uh, yes. Cool. Then you can destroy portals, but I'll get to that in a second. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, um, the other paid actions uh, regard the fragment. Mm -hmm. So, you can pick up, drop, or pass the fragment. Okay. So, to pick up the fragment, you have to just simply be on the tile of the fragment because the fragment is in the middle of yep. the tile. You pay one tribute essence and the fragment goes on top of your soul giver. Okay. Uh, in the real game, uh, we still need to fix this on Tabletopia, I apologize, yep. but in the real game, the fragment has uh, shields. Oh, so, cool. So yeah. uh, you lose your own shields as a soul giver, but you will acquire the fragment soul givers. Sure. Uh, sorry, it's fragment shields. Cool. Uh, in this case, they have the same shape as these fragments of this soul giver, so we can just pretend those Oh, are sure, shields. sure. Yeah, cool. Um, then you can pass the fragment. That's another action, and you can do so uh, at three exact linear cells. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's an action of, of the person that passes the fragment, not of the 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 the, the soul giver that receives it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't have uh, obstacles uh, on in the middle. Yep. And uh, so that means that you already have to have a soul giver there. Sure. to receive it so you remember when i was saying like you cannot go back and reactivate a soul giver yeah. this is an important part like you have to probably figure out how to get a soul giver there before cool and then you just simply pay one tribute essence and you pass it cool okay is, uh, is this and... is this um is this soul giver shielded on this space what no is this, oh, no, this um, is barri prevent, barricaded uh, no, that, that's to prevent the use of anomaly cards. Oh, Do you sorry. remember that before I was saying that there were instant cards? If you yeah. place one of your soul givers in this spot, yep. um, the opponent cannot draw new anomaly cards or play anomaly uh, cards they already have. Sure. So uh, your opponent could do the same, of course. If you yeah. put uh, your architect here, I w won't be able to use them. Got it. So if you want to take away any chance of any surprises, you do that. Cool. Uh, the other paid action we were saying is dropping the fragment. You just pay one tribute essence, and you drop the fragment. Sure. That's it. At the yep. end, at the in the middle of the tile. Yep. Um, the last tribute action that you can do is pick up, draw a, an anomaly card. Okay. So basically, you pay one tribute essence if you have any left. Uh, if yep. you you. You pay one tribute essence and you just draw one anomaly card. Okay. Anomaly cards can be very powerful because uh, uh, there are anomaly cards like threes that prevent uh, one soul giver from moving. Yep. Um, there is the very uh, scary one that is, um, it's called uh, Fracture. Okay. So it allows you to destroy one portal or put, like of your opponent. Yep. Uh, but you have to have specific, like you have to meet specific requirements. Sure. Like in this case, your soul giver will have to be right next to my portal. Yeah. So I can kind of foresee that a little bit like, oh, why are you getting next to my portal if the fragment is here? Mm, sure, that's sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they, they can be very powerful uh, if played right, but you can block them, sure. as I was saying. Yeah. The important thing about anomaly cards is that you can only play, you can hold up to three. Mm -hmm. You can draw only one per turn, yep. and you play them in, during the opponent's turn. Oh, so okay. So you play them in the opponent's turn in three specific moments yep. when they activate one of their soul givers. So you have three chances, yep. but you can only play one in the opponent's turn. So sure. now that I have three chances, I can use three. You can still use one. Um, um, and when and... you when you when you draw an anomaly card, it's only if you have at least one tribute essence left. But you don't spend the tribute essence. Is that right? Uh, well, you spend it. Oh, to you do spend it. Pay for the card. Oh, yep, cool. Okay. Yes. Yep. Cool. Okay. Uh, so as I was saying, you play it in the moment they activate it. So before they move the soul giver, before they do any abilities with mm. the soul giver, in the moment you say. I activate the architect. Yeah. I that's the moment I, I use it. Okay. Cool. So you cannot say I activate the architect, I move it here, and I'm like, oh I don't like that. No. No, that that's not how it works. Sure, sure. Okay. Uh what else? So the yes, when at the end of your turn, mm -hmm. uh you have do you see these dice? You yep. don't throw them, you don't roll them. Oh yep. Uh 
they are uh, they indicate your decay mm -hmm. stage. So each die corresponds to one soul giver. You're, we said that you always play with three. Mm. So when you, for example, when a soul giver dies, you will put it in the discarded pile, mm. um, and then you will pick two, choose one, put the other one back in the deck, shuffle. But you always play with three. So cool. when you, when one dies at the beginning of your next turn, you have to have another one. Yep. Uh, so they indi they all start with one when they are new in okay. the game. Uh, at the end of each turn, the decay increases by one. Okay. Okay. So, for example, at the end of the turn, you will go to simply two. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if they have used one or more tribute essences, that's why you usually put them on the card. Yep. Um, the decay increases by two instead of one. So oh, okay. let's say that it was okay. I used the I used the volumenter. I used their ability. So I used at least one tribute essence mm -hmm. instead of inc going to two at the end of the turn. It will go to three. Okay. Okay. It doesn't matter if you used all three tribute essences on the volumenter. If you used one, yeah. It always would just be like a plus two. Okay. Um, the last thing I need to say is that each population has a, a special ability that okay. characterizes them because they have special characteristics that depend on the planet they come from, the universe they come from. Sure, sure. And so, for example, mine is called the border. Mm. Uh, and these are the modifiers. Uh, these are uh, modifiers that you use. Like this is the hole maker because it creates hole make, uh, hole, uh, black holes. Black holes. Uh, these yep. are the patterns modifiers. These are the ability modifiers. Mm -hmm. And uh, you basically, with the border, uh, you create a wall of six, um, basically of six cells, linear cells. It's like a linear wall that cannot be moved from there. Yep. It cannot be uh, pierced. It cannot be broken. Like it stays there. Um, the cool thing is that population abilities can only played once per game. Cool. So they're so powerful, but you play once per per game, and they only last from when from when you place them. Yep. To the beginning of your next turn. Sure. Okay. Okay. So if it's uh, really and... if it's really essential, use it. But that's the only time you get to do it. Yes. Okay. It can be really like game changing, but yeah, cool. you got the only one. While uh, you, uh, the specters, really like black holes. So basically, I can say that. The, your <laughs> yeah, your um, population ability is that uh, it's called Event Horizon. And what it does is that you place your modifiers on top of black holes that can okay. be printed black holes or uh, black holes you create with the hole maker. It's mm. up to you. Uh, you have you choose four black holes. You pl you place your modifier on top of it. And what it does is that it amplifies its power. So everybody even passing by that black hole is going to be sucked in and right. die possibly. Right. Okay. <laughs> all, uh, while all opposing my... soul givers. Yeah. Yeah, cool. while mine is basically a wall just for you. I yeah. can go through it, but it's a wall for you only. Interesting. Yep. Mm. <laughs> so uh, basically, this is it. It seems like a lot of rules, but they're yeah. very... Uh, you repeat them so much yep. um, that basically after one game, you, you learn them. What is really difficult in this game is choosing your strategy yeah. and creating the right combination between soul givers, like the three you have, yeah. and soul givers and souls and and so, so um how do more i mean i i start with three and then let's say yes. a soul giver dies what uh happens then do do, do more cool. soul givers come out yes so basically what you do is that okay you remove that token from the the board you put the soul you put that dead soul giver in the soul pile because it could come back yep. as a soul uh, but then you just pick two soul givers from your deck, oh, that's right. choose you did one say of that. the two, yep. and you put it back in the deck and shuffle. So every time you still got a choice, it's not super random either mm. because you still have a choice. Okay, this soul giver fits my strategy right now, or this one does. Cool. So you still have uh, a little bit of uh, a choice there. Cool. We didn't want to just be like, all right, I got this soul giver, it's completely useless right now. Bye. Yeah, yeah, With yeah. With that yeah. said, you can sacrifice your soul giver like nothing prevents you from just walking into a black hole if mm. you need the soul of that soul giver instead of that actual soul giver right. so even sacrificing your own soul givers is a strategy interesting um that's cool and the other question i had was 
what is the purpose of tracking the decay and does something bad happen at a certain point? Thank you, yes. So uh, when you reach six, yep. your soul giver dies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, sure. like a, it, it, it's like a disease that is consuming you from yeah. within. So when you reach six, your soul giver dies, drops the soul and goes away. Yep. Important thing is that when you absorb an allied, uh, an allied soul, you reset the die. Oh, so sure. that soul is like new food, new energy, new ah, life. Uh, and so I absorbed the soul. I was at five, let's say. Yep. I go back to one. Okay, cool. Okay. Awesome. Uh, yeah. And also that, if you're about to die, that's why you can do that pass action, just to give it to someone yep. who's more alive. Exactly, yes. Cool. And... Um, or even closer to the the portals yeah. like there are tons of things that you can do with it uh it's really i i haven't even basically played all the i have more than probably 300 hours playing oh this game goodness. but i haven't <laughs> played all the strategies because it's impossible there are mm. so many variables that it's it's infinite that's cool. um also going to the no random game is that the board is kind of random mm. except for one two, three, these three tiles or always are in the same positions. Yeah. Um, but you do get the chance at the beginning uh, of the game to switch one of the tiles in front of your mm. um, portals okay. to any tile that is not, of course, the main three yep. or a tile in front of your opponent's portal. Interesting. So anything else is uh, you can pick it and rotate as you want and switch it with one of the tiles in your in front of your okay. um, portal. So even then, like, let's say you chose this to start with a space walker who basically uses uh, black holes as wormholes, so yeah. as portals to go from one point to the other. And like me, you didn't get any kind of like black hole next to your portal, yeah, which is kind yeah. of like fundamental. I can do this. Yep. I can rotate my, and maybe I didn't like that like that because that's too many walls. Yep. Uh, to close, I can do that. Cool. Okay. Okay. Let's see. I so... think um, if that's what's happening, I think I'm going to swap these two. Well, you can't swap that oh. one because oh, it's can't. in front of my portal. Oh, I see. I see. So yeah. anything except the ones in front of your portals. And the main three and ones. And the main three. Like the, the, the two interference cells, yes. These yeah. are called interference. Okay, that's okay. Because I think I just... I know you like having portals to transport around, but I just might want to suck you up in case yep. you get that's too close. Too. I think that's what I want to do. And that'll go there. So yeah, that's that's basically the game. That's awesome. I'm I'm really excited to try it. Um. So... Oh, and, and how does the game end? Sorry. No, just you need to bring the the fragment to your oh, portal. You that's have it. to just simply step on your portal. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the goal of the game is really easy. You just go get the fragment, bring it back. Cool. Easy. <laughs> just so much can happen in between. All right, I'm excited. How do we? Um, oh, first I guess I choose three soul givers, right? Yes. So you choose three soul givers. Uh, usually, you the first person. Wait. Oh no, I I took them okay. all. Sorry. <laughs> There they are. Okay. <laughs> um, wait, I can't touch the game for some reason. Oh no, you've disappeared. I might have to just, just, reload yeah. the page. That's okay. Let me. So you choose three soul givers. Mm. Usually, the the person that draws better uh, starts, just because it's a very artsy game. Sure, sure. But you can go first. The person that goes second, though. Uh, draws two anomaly cards, chooses yep. one yep. to keep, and puts the other one back in the game. Got it. Okay. So. So let's see. So I can I choose from all of my ten? Yes. Mm. So I will suggest not to maybe. Uh, for example, the ghost. Yep. Uh, really likes to use souls a lot, so yeah, its so... power is basically based on souls. So maybe it's not the best. Because there were no the souls first. out yet. Exactly. Okay. That makes sense. Um, let's see. I think... Maybe I want... I think I like the Space Walker, based on what yeah. I read. Space Walker sounds fun. Um, let's see. You, like, as you play, you will know your 
play your, like your soul givers better and sure. like start figuring out which one you like to play first. Interesting. But um, the spacewalker is a great first uh, choice uh, as the architect is very popular usually. Uh, yeah, I was looking at the architect. Either... I like the idea of well, yeah, I like the idea of sliding tiles. I think that's probably a good idea too. And plus has a dagger icon, which is nice. Yep. <laughs> and then I think I'll take the runner because if I can just get that really quick movement, I might be able to use that somehow. Yep. That sounds a good starting team. Like a cool. good starting team. I'm gonna use the Volomancer, uh the patcher, and Hmm, that's interesting. I will use the the confuser just to get a little like to show more uh, characters. Interesting. Sure. Now, so I don't want to share spaces with the patcher or share tiles. You don't exactly okay. because their aura is really interesting and basically prevents you from activate that um, that uh, soul giver that is sharing the same tile with the patcher. So it's really, it's called Hush. In fact, like you see, that's that's their main thing. The yeah. Patcher doesn't speak, yep. but doesn't let anybody else doesn't speak as well. Doesn't let anyone speak. <laughs> nope, like yeah. everybody shut up. Okay, okay. Uh, the other thing is that it can just, um, you, with the modifiers, that are the white modifiers, yeah. they're kind of like translucent in the real game, yep. but uh, you can either cover black holes or walls. Okay. So you can kind of help uh your way that way the oh, confuser rotates tiles or the shields yep uh of a soul giver and the volumancer has mind control so can move uh without like against their will another oh, soul wow. giver and acquiescence can steal the fragment from opposing soul givers oh no well. okay interesting but i want to keep it's i want to keep uh barriers between the fragment uh, b between the whoever is holding the fragment and the volumancer you want to keep the volumancer away, let's yeah. say that. Because yeah, the I... range is not that fast, it's just like three cells, so they yep. have to be pretty close, but yep. be away from the volumancer is always a good, a that good makes strategy. Sense. Yeah, okay, cool. Interesting. And so what... you can start first, you will start by placing your uh, three soul givers. Mm -hmm. uh, they have the icon, so you can easily recognize them. Uh, they will have also the name on the side uh but we didn't have time to fix everything that's okay no there was be. a um those are the wait those are the souls that you're oh, taking, they're the though. souls that's right yep they're not dead yet so. not yet <laughs> so i've got that i've got that that's, and this one is the last one yeah right okay so you can place them on either portal mm -hmm. it's up to you uh you place all three of them and then i place mine okay i'm going to place the runner here because there's a clear path that's mm -hmm. nice i'm going to place the um no wait sorry i remove the barrier by attacking yes that's yep. right so probably definitely the architect or space walker need to get there um i think the space walker should be near a portal and the architect mold slides one tile by one spot slide all other tiles of the road accordingly the tile that goes up okay so i think the architect should also i think the ar architect can be in this area yeah yep so i place mine so i will place Let's see, a patcher here, um, I'll place the confuser here, mm -hmm. and the volumancer here. Okay, okay. it okay. doesn't matter where you place them on the portal, because they can enter the game from any of the four cells in front got of you. Got it, got it. You mind just stepping into the, the board, uh, so on a tile from the portal is already one point of your movement. Oh, cool. Okay, well, um, I will... Oh, wait, I have to oh. draw two anomalies. Let me shuffle them. Yep. I draw two, and I choose one. Oh, cool. Do I do the same, or just you? No, nope. because, because you're going second. second. Cool. Yeah. That's um, fine. I'll use that one. Oh. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Well, let's see. What have we got? We've got the spacewalker and the architect down here. I need to get one of them to the center barrier because we need that barrier gone. But maybe I'll just let yep. you destroy the barrier. So maybe I should just be That's annoying. We can stare at the barrier. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Um, like, you do it, I'll do it. <laughs> okay, wait. Sub superliminal speed. The runner cannot be chosen as the direct target of anomaly cards or soul giver's ability. So I can just be annoying, but I can't really can, attack. Exactly. Or do Keep in much. mind that though that everything, so every ability or anomaly that targets the tile, mm. not the soul giver, mm. uh, can affect the tile the, the, the runner is on. Got it. Okay, that's interesting. So, wow. for example, the runner cannot be the target of my mental control or yep. acquiescence with the uh, Volomancer, but it can be, uh, the tile can be rotated by my confuser. Sure. Okay. I think I'm going to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to spend a tribute and draw an anomaly as well. Um, I can do that now, right? Yeah, you can. Cool. And what have I got? That. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Interesting. Um, that's good to know. I'm going to move the spacewalker one, two, and free action move into this portal. Um, because yeah, it does not count it's as the passive. Yeah. yeah, it's an aura, and just moving from one, it, it's a point like of movement stepping onto the the black hole yep. but then using it as a portal is not so you yeah can do cool that. cool um and I, I i can just do all these free actions um i cannot repeat the same type but so maybe i will set up that, that as my rotation yep. and i'm also going to move the architect oh just one two three um and i'm going to move the runner six one, two, three, four, five, six. That's nice. Uh, and then I, let's see, I've got some action. So I've got two tribute. The actions when you activate the, uh, so if you want to do a, an action with the architect, you have to do it before you move the Oh, that makes runner. sense. Of course, I have to do them in, in the order. That's right. That's right. And it's kind of... Uh, remember to say that you activate a soul giver because right now I didn't want to do anything but let's say I wanted to use my anomaly card yeah. I have to have that like split second to say hey wait no let me do this if that you just start sense. saying like oh I use this of the architect I already know what you're gonna do and oh, you're gonna give me basically an advantage just because you forgot to say I activate this character that, that, that makes sense that makes sense yeah no problem I think um, I don't want to spend up my essence yet, so I'm just going to, because what else can I do? Play an anomaly card, drop the fragment, grab the fragment. I think I'm okay for now. Uh, yep, I think I'm just going to uh, pass. All right, so you increase your decay, so you didn't yep. use any tribute essence, they just simply go to two. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's my turn. Okay. All right, so I am going to, let's see. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Okay, so I'm going to activate my patcher. Mm -hmm. And I am going to move it. It has a movement of four, so I'm yep. going to do one, two, three, four. Okay. And I blocked your chance of using the anomalies, the anomalies. or yep. draw any new ones, yes. Uh, and I am going to move the shields like, nope, not like this, <laughs> not like this, like this. Yeah, I like them like that. Hmm. Um, and then I'm done with my patcher. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to activate the um, confuser. Yep. And the confuser moves of three. Uh, so if I wanted to, I can't really. Uh... Oh, yes, I can. So I'm going to do this. Uh, let me think it right. So I want to do one. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to use uh, the ability of called uh, Chaos yep. that allows me to, ro to rotate two tiles. 
as desired. Okay. The uh, range is infinity, so that means it's the entire board. So yep. basically, I put my little tribute essence on the ability, so I remember that I already use an ability and mm. I can't use another one. Uh, and I rotate this one. Let me see how I want to rotate it. Yes, I like it like oh, no. that. I don't like and that. And then I choose <laughs> another one, and I think it's going to be this one. Yep. I just have to figure out how I want to. No, not like that. Yeah, like that can okay. work. Okay. Uh, so now I continue uh, mm -hmm. because I can. I so, sorry, I forgot uh, to tell you before that you can interrupt your movement to take yes. an action and then resume. Uh, yeah. Resume uh, your okay. Movement. Yep. Cool. Uh, pardon, that's my bad. That's okay. That's uh, fine. <laughs> And then, so I did one, two, yep. and since I already use a tribute essence, my decay is gonna increase by two anyway. I'm yep. gonna attack because why not? Why not? Has the little dagger. So your spacewalker is now oh, no. dead. So you replace it with the uh, soul. soul. Yep. And uh, you put it. There should be like a, the. Destroy. Destroyed soul giver pile. Yeah, they can again. They can come back in the game if you yep. absorb the soul. So don't you... put it in the forever dead pile yet. Of course. <laughs> Once the soul is gonna be destroyed, so that's when the soul giver cannot come back anymore. But cool. okay, so I guess I'm happy just like that, having destroyed your space that sound... walker. Yep, that I'd be pretty happy. Yep. <laughs> and then I go on with the volumancer. And the Volumancer it moves by four. Let's see what I can do. I'm just gonna move one, two, three, four, like mm -hmm. that for now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can work. Cool. All right, so that's uh, the end of my turn. I still have a Tribute Essence, so I'm just gonna spend it to buy an Anomaly card. Yep. Perfect, and right. I'm gonna increase my decay. So this goes to two because I didn't use any tribute essence. I used two here, so it goes to three, mm -hmm. and this one goes to two. Cool. At the beginning of your turn, you will both reset your tribute essences because you have them again. Yep. And pick two cards, like draw two cards, and choose which one you want to keep. Okay, what have we got? Um, I'm gonna just put both of them on the board, uh, so you can talk talk me through what you think yeah. would be a good idea, actually. So, because there's a lot of abilities to think about. Yeah. So you have the Volumancer and the Ghost. Mm. So the Volumancer, we talked about it. It's really if you want to control my um, mm. Soul Givers. The Ghost is pretty cool because if you just stepped in, let's say here, you can absorb this Soul right away. Oh, because, as a free, um, as, as a free, a yeah. Case. yeah. It can even go through walls, so... Um, I don't know, if you want to use the Volumancer a little later, maybe to steal one of my souls, because... Sorry, sure. the ghost, uh, because the ghost can also absorb uh, opposing souls. Yep. So if you want to kind of, like, be mean and like, oh, you like the Volumancer, good, I'm gonna take that soul once it's dead, so yep. you can't get it anymore. Or... Um, the Volumancer can be uh, nice right now, but keep in mind it doesn't attack, and you already have one character. I only character have one that character that can attack. Yes, so mm. you might want to do the ghost just because you have better chances of breaking the barrier if I don't. I think I want the ghost just because I want that attack out right now. And do I give and I give that deck a shuffle? And then your die goes back to one because it's in your character. Yep. So the thing about Ghost is that if you absorb, even with the ability and not with the free action, if you absorb an allied soul, mm. your decay die reset. Mm. Uh, but if you absorb my souls, it doesn't. Okay, got it. Oh, you can even steal them from me. Like, if I'm in double soul, you can steal the soul that I have. Okay, cool, cool. Interesting. Hmm. Now, can, can the Ghost go through the cent central barrier? Nope. No. But it can go through the border, so my population ability. Oh yeah, cool. So the, the first barrier is kind of like a unique type of wall, you cannot go through it, but uh, the ghost can go through my super border, uh, even if it's a wall, because Got it. they have the, the passive aura. So the ghost can go through cells with walls or other obstacles, including the border, but cannot stop on them, um, except for the center one. 
because it's the barrier. Oh, you can even yeah. go through um, soul givers if they want to. They can just walk past That's soul right. givers. Cool. The thing is that they cannot stop on the same cell, so you have to yeah. have enough movement to do that extra step. Cool. Awesome. Okay, so it's my turn then. Yep. Um, and the first thing I do, I guess, is summon the ghost. Mm. And I can summon on either portal? Yep, you mm. decide. Okay, I'm gonna go there. Um, I think I will. Let's see. I love saying summoning the ghost. It sounds like, I don't know, as a <laughs> D&D player, it seems some kind of spell. Oh yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. That's awesome. Um, hmm. Let's see. What I think I will do is yeah, I'm going to use uh, the architect. Um, so you activate the architect. Yep, I'm okay. activating the architect. And with the architect, I'm going to use the mold power. Uh, so I'm going to slide this tile to the left. You can't because no? the... No, well, because you can slide it uh, up and down. Yep. But you can't because if you read on mold, you cannot uh, move oh, it the is not tile possible or to the slide line the... of the tile where the fragment is on. Oh, okay, okay. That makes sense. That's the limitation, yeah. Not possible to slide a tower with the barrier is on it. Ah, oh, dang, okay. That's okay then. Hmm. Because I was hoping to wrap that around there and then kill you with my well, ghost. Well, yeah, actually, um, <laughs> it should say fragment on it, but Oh, yeah, okay. sure, cool. <laughs> okay, that makes sense, yep. Oh, so if it has the fragment on it, I can't slide it. Yeah, well, yes, it's, um, I don't know if it's an old text, uh, unfortunately, but it's if it has the fragment cool. on it. I'll keep that in mind. So even if you, uh, the barrier wasn't there, you won't be able, otherwise you will just be getting the fragment closer and closer to your portal. Yeah, that makes sense, win. that makes sense. Okay, in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm still going to use the architect's um, mold, but I'm going to slide this down. So, uh, you have to be closer. Oh, do, oh see, what's like, the range? It's oh, it's three. Oh, it's one. Well, it's one. So if you move on this cell, yep. which you can do because you have yep. the movement, you can slide this tile as well because it's one. So it's the tile you're on, and then the right, uh, the tiles right next to you. So yep. you can that, slide. That makes sense. So this, I'm gonna go. This. Yeah. Cool. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, Perfect, yes. like that. I reckon. Um, and then I'm going to slide this one down. Yes, now you can do it. Cool. So. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Down? No, I'm going to slide it up. I'm going to slide that up. Excuse me. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that. There we go. Perfect, okay. Mm -hmm. So, and I've rotated, rotated the architect where I want them. Um, what else I could do? Well, since... The architect is already going to take damage, but I don't like how close you are to the to the fragment. So maybe I don't want to open it up to you right now. Hmm. I think actually I will just activate the ghost. So I'm going okay. to activate the ghost, and I'm going to move one. Two, uh, and then I'm going to attack. Oh no! Okay, I'm dead. This one's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so my confuser is gone, and it was here. Yep. So it doesn't really matter where on this. I mean, it, it's always better to put it on this exact same cell that yep. you were on because, like, the ghost, for example, has a line of like it, it, the range that is a straight line. Yeah, yeah. But if that was to be like I don't know for some reason occupied with something else, you can put it on any cell because oh um, sure, sure. You any just cell need to in the tile. On the same tile. Yeah. yeah, cool. To absorb um, it, but cool. All right. Well, and, and, yeah, and then. I mean, I can still 
just move on to it. Uh, but what yeah, I'm... it's not an occupied cell. Like this is in material. Like the soul is not really an obstacle. So you can even if you were in the ghost, you can just walk past it. I think I'm gonna take that. So, so you're gonna pay. I'm gonna pay a tribute to take it as the ghost. Okay, and then I'll keep yep. this nearby so I can just have a look. You can put it underneath. Do you see that there is like an assigned soul? Oh, ah, cool. Awesome. So now, since you already used your ability, so you can do it now, but from your next turn, yep. you'll be able with just one tribute essence, you'll be able to use both uh, the ghost ability oh, and, the and the confuser. One, yeah, and one of the confuser's ability. Yep. Cool. Rotates all soul givers as desired on the same tile. Interesting. Okay, cool. So that's the ghost done. And then finally, I activate the runner. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I rotate the ghost. Uh, uh, he's fine like that. Uh, and the yeah. runner... Uh, I'm going to make the runner go... Oh, because I can't do turns. But... I will make the runner go here, rotate, and that's it. Uh, your ghost goes to three, yes. your architect goes to four, and the runner to three. Yep. And now I, I just shuffle, because you never know. I yep. throw a two, and... Yeah, we're not. And oops, I was. You saw one of my cards. That's okay. I didn't. I didn't <laughs> absorb it. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm gonna put. I picked the runner and the architect, but I put the runner back, and I'm gonna put the architect down. Oh, cool. Because I think it's gonna be more useful for me. Right? To do okay. some manipulation. Interesting. Yes. So, and it's going to go. Let's see. Hmm. I don't know where I want to put the architect. I guess I'll put it here. Yeah, why not? All right, so I'm going to start with, ha, huh, this is tough. I'm going to start by activating the patcher. Okay. And the patcher is going to use uh, their ability called to pat this wall down because oh. I don't really like it there. Okay. Uh, so like that? No, <laughs> I'm so awful at this. Part. It's it's okay. All right, so now I have a clear uh path basically cool. for my bolomancer. Yeah, and I think that's the only thing that my pastor is going to do, do for, for this now. Time. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to use the bolomancer. Yep. And I'm going to do one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to break that barrier. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, no, no, wait. I can't. The Volumancer doesn't have, doesn't have an attack. Yeah. Nope. Ha. Okay. So, but instead, what I'm, oops, instead, what I'm going to do is that, let's see. Did one. Hmm. Yeah, why not? I'm going to use, uh, ready at two. I'm going to use mind control. Oh, no. And on your runner. Yep. And I'm going to move it so i can move any of your soul givers of up to two cells and i'm gonna do this oh no <laughs> <laughs> goodbye runner okay you're like oh i didn't see that coming <laughs> <laughs> all right and i am going to i guess be done with my volumes mm -hmm. he's done enough damage uh, and then i'm gonna use the architect yep. and the architect is going to do this so it's going to do one two uh three mm -hmm. now thinking backward like back i should have done first the architect and then the volumancer for what i wanted to do but oh, it's yeah. okay like that. okay uh and i am going to just simply use use um mold yep and move me uh, one up. Cool. And I understand this is very dangerous because if you have fracture, you can easily break that portal. Yeah. But that's what I want to do. Okay. And I'm gonna move my shields like. 
God, this is tough. I guess I'll keep them. <laughs> no, I don't like it like that. Uh, like this. Cool. It's fine. Sweet. So that's the end of my turn. I yep. used an ability on everyone, so everybody gets a plus two. Oh, no. Uh, oh, sorry. I didn't reset this die before. So oh, that, that goes that's to fine. Three. Yep. And the patcher goes to four. four. All right. Cool. So your turn. So I need to draw two cards, find a new friend, and I'll keep them open again so you can have a look with me. We've got the protector and the homemaker. And the homemaker. Mm, so but... if you can get the soul of the uh, spacewalker somehow, like yeah. you have a ghost right there, you can technically you can do it. Um, it's very interesting, the combination of Homemaker Spacewalker, because the Homemaker can basically create a passage for the Spacewalker anywhere on the board. Oh, sure. Place one uh, black hole on one The Protector, cell. though, is really nice because it's it's a tank, basically. has yeah. three shields. Uh, and anybody, any ally that um, is on the same tile as the Protector is immune to being destroyed by, by an attack. attack. Interesting. I assume other effects can still destroy it, but not. Yeah, like what I did with the volumetry yeah, before. Yeah, threw me into a black it, hole. But... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I cannot attack you. Sure, sure. Interesting. What do I need right now? I mean, I've got a ghost who can go through anything, really. I've got the architect who does tile manipulation. I think. Um, yeah, I think the protector would be good for now. Yeah, you can even reach with charge. You can reach in a, a soul giver and push it back one tile. Oh, so yeah, even cool. that would be very interesting. Interesting. So that is the little mountain, and I'm gonna summon the protector. Can move up to three and can turn. I'm gonna put him here. I think. Yeah, I need some protection over here. So, for example, like one strategy you can try if you don't like the fact that you can't use anomaly cards right now. Yeah, you can try to move Bump this line. Up. Yeah, so that you don't have a wall. Walk in with the protector and push my patcher. Oh off sure, one time. sure. Because oh yeah, it's a uh, up to six. Oh, up to one cell away. But I can charge six. Yep. Okay, interesting. But you have the wall in the, in between right now, so you can't do it. So you will have to get rid of that wall first. Yeah, interesting. Um, okay. Oh, and I reset my anomalies, of course. My tributes. Mm -hmm. So. And also, it goes to one, whatever. The, the new one was the protector. It. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Um, you can even just walk in and absorb the soul of the. Uh, of the runner the runner i think that's not a bad idea actually and also it will make you immune to being targeted by my volumenser for example it will be a very cool combination yes, actually i'm very <laughs> curious about that actually i think i'm gonna go one but wait i can't walk into a black hole can i to be on the same tile only so oh, if you right. just walk one you can already absorb it because it doesn't matter which tile the the soul yeah. is on i'll go one and i'll absorb so, it yep so like that. Oh no. There you go. Cool. Um, yeah, so so I've act sorry, I've activated the um the mm -hmm. wait. The protector, yes. Um mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna go one. Ooh, no no uh oh. Yeah, just think about the order the first. Order. I think you were excited about absor absorbing the runner. I think I was, Think about yes. the order you want to do things. Yes, of course. So what I think I will do, I think you are on to the right track. I will activate the architect for now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I will activate the ghost first. Mm -hmm. um, and because I have the confuser... I can spend one fragment to do a soul giver's ability. Yeah, you can one uh, one with one tribute essence. You can activate one um, soul giver ability and yep. one uh, soul ability in the order you want. Mm, okay. Yep. Cool. So if you want to use before like the confuser 
to I don't know rotate my shields or something yeah. or the tile yeah. and then use eradicate to absorb that soul you can cool interesting so eradicate pay a tribute in decay instead of tribute essence choose the soul of an allied or opposing soul giver in a double soul or you will still have to pay in decay but since you will be absorbing this soul you pay in decay but then you reset your decay but then i reset my decay yeah, yeah. okay yeah i'm definitely going to do so i'm going to do that um and the first thing i'm going to do is rotate two tiles as desired so i'm going to rotate that and i'm going to rotate um i'm going to rotate that and then uh the next thing i will do is the eradicate pay the tribute in decay instead of tribute essence so i pay one uh decay in decay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you can get rid of your soul and absorb a new one yeah great so um by doing that i will absorb the new one and i just put that no back. that stays oh. on the on the tile oh it stays on the tile cool yeah I'll... and then you absorb it doesn't matter where you put it really so i'll okay. put it there so it's a bit more trouble for you to get to <laughs> there okay and then you reset your decay die as well yep cool and now, and now i have so the... i take this back yep and then you put there the, the space, space walker. walker cool the space walker swaps spots with another allied soul giver Hmm. Let's teleport. Unless they're bringing the fragment. Keep in mind that if they're carrying the fragment, the yep. fragment drops before they swap. Oh yeah, of course, of course. Um, the spacewalker can go in and out of all black holes on the borders if they were connected. Does black holes do not destroy? So now I think I will use the ghost's movement to go one, two, and I'm going to spend another tribute to attack. Is that right? Because, right. yes, because the space walker makes him immune to black holes. Yeah. Cool. I um, attack. So now you have a character that both can walk on black holes and yep. through walls. Yeah, right. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so my architect dies. Yeah. And the soul is there. Excellent. And what does the architect do? Do I want that? Oh, I think I don't want to get rid of... So... If I walk onto this space, will I automatically absorb it? Uh, no, and that's, that will be your ability because yep. it's an allied soul and you already uh, used your ability once. Oh, cool. So you okay. cannot retake that ability, uh, that cool. action in this turn. Next turn, if you want, you can use Eradicate to get rid of your soul. Yep. Because usually when a soul giver is in double soul, just cannot uh, get rid of the soul. You will have cool. to be attacked to lose the soul and then absorb another one. Got it. That makes sense. Okay, so if you have a double soul, you cannot just walk onto another uh, tile and say, I don't want this anymore. Sure. Get rid of it. I'll take this one. That's the, the ghost ability, basically. Cool. Awesome. So next uh, turn, if you want to use Eradicate again, yep. you totally can. Cool. I'm okay with that. Although, oh yeah, and the ghost has one, uh, is back to one, so that's really cool. Oops. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think I will... So I, I was able to interrupt my movement, so I've only used two movements so far. Um, is that right? I can keep moving? Moving. I can keep moving uh, the ghost? because yeah 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 yeah, yeah yeah perfect um i'll go three four and so that's the ghost done now i'm gonna go with the what have we got over here are you uh i think you didn't do anything with the architect or the, the protector, protector yet. yep so i'm gonna use the protector and all uh, right I'm... um i'm actually going to stop you because i'm gonna use my anomaly card mm -hmm. temporal suspension temporal suspension basically allows me to um allows me to use a soul giver in your turn mm -hmm. so i'm gonna stop time for a second and i can do um either one free, free action yep or a tribute action cool okay uh so Let's see, what I want to do is actually, 
ah, no, I can't reach. I shouldn't use, I've used that then. <laughs> um, let's see. One, two. I didn't actually want to use it, but I'll use it anyway. So I'll do, what can I do now? I'll do, ha ha ha. I'll just do this. Because you're there mm -hmm. and not close enough. I'll just do one, yeah. two, just like this. And I'll uh, move this like that. Okay. All right. Okay. And then this is gone. Bye. Okay. Okay. So I'm still using the protector, but mm -hmm. um, the protector is going to. The protector is going to use charge. And just run at this. Yep. And then push that one back. And now you can use anomalies. And now I can use anomalies. Great. Yeah. That's good to know. Um, and the protector still has free movement, right? Wait, you walked in, so you that. You oh, I one, walked in. So... That counted as one. Yep. Yeah. So you still have the movement, but yep. you have minus one to whatever your movement. Of course. Is. Yep. So um, I'll use that there. Ah, okay. Yep. And then, oh no. Mm. Act, Just keep uh, in mind that if I don't move from there, you won't be able to activate the protector next turn. Ah, uh, yeah, of course. Of course. But yeah. you're there. I am. So you can't do anomalies and you still have one in your hand. So that's good. I do. Okay. I think I like that. Um, Hold on. But who are you? That's the... Patcher. The patcher can move four, which could just circle me. One, two, three, four, stab. Oh, I don't like that. Maybe I won't. Well, no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'll move there. Um, I will move there. And I'm out of tributes, so I can't attack, but that's okay. Because... I'm fully protected. Um, yes, you are. So I'm okay with that. So the protector's done. Now the architect um, slides one tile by one spot. Uh, but I can't affect anything with the fragments. I think I will... You can just move right now, basically, because you don't have any um Oh, that's true. Slapped. I don't have any tribute. Yeah. And that's really all I can do. Um, and I can't move through other pieces. Is that right? can't no yeah so you can just go back basically right now yeah of course hmm i think that i think i won't do anything with the architect for now i think yeah i think that's it increase your decay yep so two here two here one here Oh, that's good that you didn't do anything with the architect, otherwise you would have killed it. The architect it. would be dead now. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I am... My architect's life was very short. Uh, so I am going to put that in the... Um, in the pile. Yep. And I'm going to draw two. So shuffle, shuffle. Draw two cards. Oh, wow, that's interesting, because oh. I picked the runner and the ghost. And I think mm -hmm. it's time for the ghost to join us. Okay. Okay. It'd be so funny if, like, I steal your ghost soul, yeah. and then you steal the soul that I stole from steal your ghost. Steal the soul of the ghost soul that you stole. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, okay, this is the ghost. Um... I'm going to put it, though, where do I need it the most? Here is my bed. Mm -hmm. OK, so both my Volomancer and my art and my Patcher would really need a boost, honestly. Yeah. But uh, what I'm going to do is, let's see. 
uh, I have to think this right in order to do it the way I want to. So mm -hmm. I'm going to activate the ghost first. And I'm going to do one, mm -hmm. two, mm -hmm. and I absorb the soul just because it's right there. And yep. why not? I don't, res oh yeah, I have to reset the decay die because it's new, but I will just bring it yes. back to one again. Yes. <laughs> two. Uh, let me see. Three, four. Mm -hmm. So the ghost and also gonna... has the runner. No, the confuser. The confuser now, yes. Okay. But I'm not gonna do anything because I need my tribute actions. Okay. So okay. So and I'm done with the ghost. Okay. I activate the bolomancer. Uh, yep, and you're not going to do that. Yet. No! You so bring I it back out of my portal? I place Xenophobia, so back to a portal. I'm going to send back here. Alright. So that goes there. So you just bring it back to my portal. I, I can still use it, it's yep. just like I can't do... No, that's my patcher. Oh, that's the patcher. Sorry. Yeah, you can still do it. Don't worry. But I'll send the we'll patcher. This I'll, one. I'll send the patcher. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, um, I am going to use... Since the Volomancer is going to basically have its last bit of energy left, yeah. I'm going to use Acquiescence. Not Acquiescence, sorry. Mind Control. And yep. I'm going to destroy your... Uh, Architect. Okay. And let's see. I it forgot about the mind four, control. Two, three. Ooh, look at that. So you put your soul there. Perfect. Yep. And I can one, two, three, four. <gasps> I can reach there. Oh no. <laughs> and absorb the architect soul. And bring it back to one. Yeah. So it's not gonna die, actually. <laughs> that was lucky. Wow. Uh, and then I'm gonna secure the... Yeah, mm -hmm. like that. It's a little mm -hmm. better. <laughs> uh, but I already have it. Well, nothing protects me from walls when I have a ghost there. So yeah. I'll keep the shields like that. All right. So I used a tribute action. I, I lost one tribute essence. Is it? Oh, here. No, I put it on. It was like orange on orange and I couldn't see it. Oh, okay. sure, sure, sure. So now I'm going to activate the patcher. Yep. That cannot do what I want it to do. But what I'm going to do is that... Hmm. What can I do with the patcher right now? That it's That makes sense. Because it's already, I'm just going to move it in. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. And for now, I'll leave it there. Because I'm afraid um, that it will die. <laughs> <laughs> Saw that. Saw that. <laughs> okay. Um, that's it. Okay. And, oh, you are not on the interference cell. So even if I moved everyone, I can use one tribute to draw an anomaly card. That's true. And good, good. I like it. And that's okay. it. So okay. my Volomancer goes to three now. Yep. Um, so three, the ghost didn't really do much. So it goes to two and the yep. Potter only moved. So it goes to five, five. Okay. waiting for its death. Yep. All right, your Ooh, turn. Okay, so the architect is dead. I draw two. What have we got? The patcher and the volomancer. Hmm. Hmm. I think the. I like the idea of the patcher. I think I'm going to go with the patcher. 
So the Pacha is that little diamond. Great. And the Pacha can spawn here. Yep. Yep. And now the Pacha has a four movement. That's very good. Because I'm going to go one, two, three, four. I'm going to spend a tribute and attack. You'll attack and I'll just lose the soul. Ah, uh, yeah, of course. Because it's two. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's fine. So you will have to attack again with the different soul givers because you cannot attack twice in the same turn. That makes sense. Yep, that's okay. Rather you not have that power. Um... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so now, for example, the architect is really done. Like... Done, yeah. done. Yeah. Like, and not come back anymore. At least my architect. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yep. Um, and let's see. Do I want to do anything with the patch? Uh, pick some patch modifier from a cell free. Mm. I think that's okay. Okay. I think that's fine. So I think I'm done with the patch for now. Then okay. I'm going to use the. Let's see. I've got the ghost with the spacewalker. Okay. The spacewalker can do the teleporting. Mm hmm. Which is fine. Yeah. I'm going to use the protector. Protector's going to go one, two, um, I'm going to stay there for now, and I'm just going to attack the barrier. Okay, so pay one tribute essence, and then... The barrier is gone. Finally! There we go. And, um... The... Protector is just going to... Hmm. Well, hang on. In order to, if I wanted to pick up the fragment. Move one on the same tile of the fragment. Yep. Pay one tribute essence and it's yours. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm not going to do that with the um, protector then. I think I'm just going to rotate the protector and the protector's done. And mm -hmm. then I'm going to use the ghost, the ghost spacewalker. I'm going to okay. go one. Um... I'm going to, let's say I have four movement, which becomes three movement. Keep in mind. Yeah? Yes, because when you get the fragment, your movement d diminishes by one. So if you move a four, uh, so you did one already, so yeah. you will have two points of movement left. Yes. That's fine. I'm going to pay a tribute, and I'm going to pick it up. Okay. So I've got that. Then I go two, three. And then, oh, yeah, no, no, I can use the wormhole. No, you can't use it. Yeah, but the fragment stays there. <gasps> the fragment, oh, no, the fragment doesn't come through. No, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had a plan. Yep, that, that makes sense. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Um, that's okay. I'll use my additional movement to go, oh, my gosh, let me pick you up, to go here. And the... Okay. I'll protect myself like like that. Keep in mind, it has uh, two shields at, at a uh, right angle. So now you have to use a little bit of imagination, but that's the those are the shields of the fragment. Oh, of course. So if I... So oh, that's right. Uh, I ignore the... how yeah. you want to keep the... Like, I imagine, like, exactly that's one and one... And the, which one is the other one? So one is clearly in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Who, and the who other can one attack? Is... The Volomancer can not attack. Cannot attack, so, but yeah. I have acquiescence. Oh. Jeez, once I'll give her carrying the fragment, the Volomancer attracts the fragment. Oh no, that's not good. But at least I won't get attacked. Because, yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, so I'll just do that. And I think, uh, have I, that's everyone. Yep, I've used everyone this turn. All right. So, so the patcher dies. Okay. So let's see. That gets set to five. 
the patch here is done and the protector goes to five so the patcher is the little diamond gets replaced with where is it um oh there no there thank you <laughs> uh there yeah cool awesome and that's uh your turn all right so let's see if my plan works oh no you had a plan <laughs> i have a plan oh, no. so i am going to do this i'm activating the volumancer mm. and i'm gonna do one mm -hmm. and two mm -hmm. then i'm gonna oh it was already here but i'm gonna use acquiescence yep and steal the fragment from you yep and then immediately <gasps> pass you it can to throw the it patter. oh no <laughs> oh no so right now yeah before i uh so you can use your ability uh when you activate uh a, when i activate or you activate it like at, at the activation of any uh, so giver, so I'm gonna activate the patcher. Yep. No, is that a patcher? Yes, that's a patcher. And I'm gonna use my border just because I want to be sure that you don't <laughs> come through. Yep. Right now, because I'm doing something very important here. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'll do it this way. Uh, okay. And oh, this no. one. No, my black hole. Uh, okay. And yep. I'm gonna use the, since the patcher is active, I can do this. I mm -hmm. can use one to use a patch. Yep. And it moves a four, so one, two, three. <laughs> oh <laughs> no, that was so good. <laughs> so you really gotta be like, so the cool thing about this game yeah. is that, um, I always win, no, I'm joking. But the cool thing about this <laughs> oh, that, game. That's why you like it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, that you really need to uh, learn the abilities. Like the more you yeah. play, the more you become like good at the game because you remember the abilities. Yeah. And you're like exactly know what you could do. Like, oh, I have a wall there. How can I get over? Oh, but that's a patcher. I can use the patch. So wow. that's the 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 cool thing is that the more you play, the more you get to know your soul givers. And that's a cool thing about the expansions too is that you can throw new stuff in there. Uh, oh, that's awesome. And you can't think too far ahead because, you know, like, okay, before I had a plan and then yeah. you moved one and you're like, oh, can't oh, no. do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So it, good, good game, by the way. Those, yeah, no, good game. That was you, fun. For your first game, that's a very good, uh, good game. Thank you. You I were really that. using your your abilities it's really cool awesome i mean yeah. there's 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 so much complexity happening and i love that you'll cycle through all the 10 different um abilities you could have mm -hmm. and the way they combo by absorbing each other it just mm -hmm. makes it even more infinite which is um <laughs> oh my gosh that's there so... are some people that want like the little like timer because it, you have so much <laughs> variables in like this like a game chess timer that... yeah yeah, you can really just spend an hour thinking about what if I do this combination? Oh my gosh. What if I do that combination? You, we had games yeah. like uh, the Comic Con last two hours just because people were thinking so much. And I, yeah. <laughs> I, I have a so friend that's... who we just can't play complex games with him. Not because he's not good at them, because he's too good at them, because he just spends 20 minutes every turn. Yeah, that's, but usually it, if you know your slow givers and you want to have fun, it's, mm. it's a kind of tough. Oh, quick game in the sense that you just spend 10 minutes and you're done but it's a strategy game and yeah i love even like thinking out loud because you make realize maybe even like your opponent like oh that's something i could have done yes absolutely <laughs> oh that's it messes really cool. i'm one of these players that sometimes messes with the opponent a little bit <laughs> yeah yeah well i mean maybe if you do if you do an expansion or a, a, another kickstarter for uh, more of this game i mean you you're already you've already got mugs and beanies available right so uh yeah. you might as well add a sand timer to the um to the add-ons that you can get for the slow thinkers like yeah really like to think about their strategy is sand timer yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> no, oh. we, we do have expansions. We have four new heroes out right now. They're wow. pretty cool. Um, we have the Whisper, the Gatekeeper, and the Soul Crusher. Unfortunately, yep. Soul Crusher was a Kickstarter exclusive, so you got it. <laughs> That's yes. good news. <laughs> but it's not available for pre-order right now. Yeah. But and uh, we are gonna have an event also because during the campaign we unlocked the two versus two uh, cool. gameplay mode. So it's gonna be two people playing on each team yep. together, um, and so we're gonna have a live <gasps> event in that. The and black fragment the that future, looks so cool. And in the future, we'll also have uh, you know new populations yep. that could mean a four-player version where everybody is fighting against each other on the same so board. So even oh more gosh. complicated. <laughs> Oh no, I don't think, I mean, my, my, my fiance and I always play two player games um, because we just don't want, we just don't want to sit there while other people take their turns. <laughs> because that's... No, I understand. That's, that, that sounds like a lot of thinking, but, but I, I'm also a lot of different strategies could play out then because you have to contend with three other people. So I can see that being very fun, but a lot of thinking would happen. Yeah, but I again like I'm I'm married too and I okay, I work for Soul Givers, but that doesn't count because I always look for a two player game that is yeah. actually fun and oh. not repetitive. Yeah. And it's like I want to have fun and yeah. sometimes it's just me and my husband because we don't feel like going out exactly. or having friends over. Yeah. And I, I have to say that despite working for this game i actually play it because That's it is awesome fun. Like, i enjoy it yeah i i had a lot of fun with this and i'm i'm really excited to get my pledge uh and try out these three these four other characters that i'm getting they're, they're fun they're powerful yeah. they are uh they add new uh mechanics to the game awesome. they're they're cool they're cool this is this has been so much fun julia thank you so much for um for teaching me the rules and, and, and playing with me. I, I really enjoyed it. And um, uh, for anyone who's watching, I posted a link to the Backer Kit pre-order page because you can go and do a late pledge now. You'll get one character less than the Kickstarters, but I think you'll still be pleased if you um, grab this game because it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Julia, you'll have this count. Yeah. So on uh, on the actual order, yep. so the late pledge still give you like a little advantage on when the game will be in store. So I suggest getting awesome. it now so you can save money. That that's really good to hear, Julia. Thank you so much for um, taking me through the game. I, I had a lot of fun, and um, I hope you enjoy the rest of Spiel Digital, everyone. Uh, Julia, you, you should. You're probably still recovering from the campaign, right? <laughs> A little bit, a little bit, but yeah. we're we're back for working for you guys. So awesome, well, good. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I had so much fun too. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. All right, you have a good day, and thank you very much, everyone. See you.